You are likely introduced to the concept of producer surplus with a diagram like this that highlights the similarity of producer and consumer surplus. The brown triangle measures the difference between the price sellers receive and the minimum amount they need to get to be willing to provide additional units of Q. But what generates producer surplus and how does it relate to underlying production costs? We'll start with a more precise definition. Producer surplus is the difference between marginal revenue and marginal cost for each additional unit sold. Let's apply that definition in the short and long runs. If the market price falls to the shutdown point, the point where price equals average non-sunk, that is, avoidable costs, then there is no producer surplus. The firm produces nothing, no additional resources are used, and no revenue comes in. All costs endured by the seller are sunk. But as price rises above this level, then the firm gains a surplus between marginal revenue, price for a competitive firm, and marginal cost. When P equals the minimum point on the average cost curve, the break-even point, where profits are just zero, producer surplus just covers the unavoidable, that is, sunk fixed cost. Thus, producer surplus for a seller in the short run equals sunk fixed costs plus any economic profit. That is, the brown area on this diagram is exactly equal to the area of the blue rectangle, short run average total cost minus average non-sunk cost times Q, plus the area of the green rectangle, price minus short run average total cost times Q. Let's find producer surplus for an example. The diagram shows short run supply as short run marginal cost running from the shutdown point, the minimum point on the average non-sunk cost curve, through the break-even point and beyond. If the market price is 40 so that the seller is just breaking even, then producer surplus is the area of the trapezoid formed by the vertical axis, short run marginal cost, and prices at the shutdown and break even points. One half of 40 minus 36 times 10 plus 8 is equal to. 36, which is the sunk fixed cost. So again, in the short run, producer surplus equals sunk fixed cost plus any economic profit. Here those economic profits are zero. But what about in the long run? In the long run, there is no fixed cost, sunk or avoidable, and entry and exit erodes any economic profit or loss. With free entry, one would expect long-run supply to be horizontal, so there should be no producer surplus, right? That is, one would only see producer surplus in the long run if long-run supply were upward sloping. So, how can we get long-run supply to be upward sloping? Consider this example. Suppose typical wheat farmers in my region can produce wheat for $4 a bushel in the long run, operating with constant returns to scale, at least up to the point where they have filled all their fields with wheat. They sell in a market with this demand. But land on my farm is more productive. I can produce 300 bushels, and I only need $1 a bushel to cover my out-of-pocket expenses. That means... I earn a surplus value of $3 on each bushel for 300 bushels for a total of $900. That surplus can't be eroded by entry into the market because anyone entering would have unit costs of $4. That difference between what I can get for my wheat and the minimum amount I need to get to be willing to provide it is economic rent, the difference between the price and my opportunity cost, the minimum needed to provide the resource. 
Actually, the economic rent in this case is a characteristic of my land, not my wheat. My productive land is a scarce resource. I should be able to sell it to any of my neighbors and they would be willing to pay me up to the point where, factoring in the rental rate on the productive services from my land, the average cost of a bushel of wheat from my land would rise to no more than $4 a bushel. So, upward sloping demand in the long run is a function of differences in the productivity of scarce resources. That is, it is a function of economic rent. Consider this example from Goolsby, Levitt, and Syverson's microeconomics textbook. Different electrical generation plants have different locational advantages, access to energy sources that can be obtained at different prices. So, as the demand for energy rises, it could be net initially at $18 a megawatt hour, then jump to 37 39 and so on. At a price of $39 per megawatt hour, megawatt hour producer surplus is generated as 37 minus 18 times the 200 units, 200 megawatts, plus 39 minus 37 times, well, let's say 220 minus 200 for a total of $3,800 forty dollars in producer surplus. That producer surplus is economic rent. Strictly speaking, the rent is a characteristic of the energy source. But who gets it is a matter of the relative bargaining power of the owner of the energy source and the owner of the electricity generating plant. The key point for our analysis is that competitive markets harness the most productive resources first. As demand expands, we turn to progressively more expensive resources, creating economic rent for the more productive resource and generating an upward sloping long run supply curve. The difference between economic profit and economic rent is that economic profit will be eroded by entry, whereas economic rent is not. In the long run, economic rent is producer surplus. Here's another example of a rising long run supply curve, the increasing cost industry. Suppose the demand for inputs, say labor services, by this industry is large relative to the input market. Expansion by this industry in response to a shift out in demand would lead to a shift out in the demand for labor raising wages and causing average cost and marginal costs to shift up and causing the market price to rise. Generating an increase in producer surplus as represented by the brown area. Ultimately that economic rent is generated by the higher wages going to workers who had been willing to work for less at the old prices in this market, the old market conditions. Bottom line, short-run producer surplus equals economic profit plus sunk fixed costs. Long-run producer surplus equals economic rent. Economic profit is eroded by entry. Economic rent is not. Economic rent, a function of scarcity, can only be altered by changes in demand or changes that alter relative scarcity through discovery or innovation.